Chapter 321 New Bay in Trouble Caspian sat down on the sofa after returning to New Bay Grand Hotel. Sylvia stood beside him and asked, Caspian, it's possible to completely eradicate the Hoff family tonight. Exterminating a family like the Hoffs was mere child's play for the man known as the Diaterranean God of War. Charles may be known as the God of Gambling, but he was still merely an ant before Caspian. Caspian smiled. It's easy to deal with the Hoff family, but remember, they control over half of the casinos within New Bay. I wouldn't want to see a power vacuum happen if I do eradicate them. Charles had built his empire within New Bay over multiple decades and built up an infrastructure of jobs within the city. Exterminating the Hoffs would be easy, but it would cause chaos for everyone living within the city. The Diaterranean god of war wouldn't stoop so low as to cause trouble for civilians. Caspian was currently placed in the spotlight for his successful battles, as well as the fact that he wasn't joining forces with others within Dord City. He had to be careful with his actions and think of the civilians while trying to eradicate the evil hiding within New Bay. Alongside him was Sylvia, a loyal subordinate who had been by his side for years. She was always prepared to sacrifice her own life for his cause. Sylvia, I need you to visit Alton tomorrow to talk about the reforms for the casinos in New Bay. Charles will most likely panic upon hearing about the news and have his only son flee from New Bay with the bulk of his fortune. We can't allow his money to leave New Bay, as it was basically coerced from the folks of New Bay throughout the years. Your main objective is to make sure that they don't escape out of New Bay with their money. Do you understand? ordered Caspian. Sylvia nodded her head. Yes, Caspian. Very well, you may leave and begin your preparations. Sylvia then walked out of the luxury suite. The moment Sylvia walked out of the room, an evil grin appeared on Caspian's face. He walked straight into Willow's bedroom. Willow's delicate cries came from the bedroom. Ah, what are you doing, hubby? Don't you already know what I want to do? You're a jerk, but I like it. The couple were both in the mood for each other's company. Caspian wanted to enjoy some time with Willow alone before she returned to South Lake City. While the couple was entwined in their bedroom, 20 miles away from New Bay stood a miserable Celestia under the pale moonlight. She seemed depressed as she stared at the bright flames burning before her. I swear to kill Caspian and avenge you, Dad, whispered Celestia. She had nothing but vengeance in mind. Caspian ruined her face and killed her father. The rest of the York family were also on the verge of collapse as the power and authority that the family had built upon for decades had been destroyed. By Caspian, Celestia would never forget and forgive Caspian for what he had done. Cole stood beside her with his arms crossed. There's no point in standing around. Celestia the dead won't come back to life. We should begin planning on how to kill Caspian and avenge your family. Celestia turned around to face Cole. She had already taken off her veil, and the scars on her face made her look like a demon under the moonlight. Even Cole was startled when he saw her face. Celestia wasn't affected by his reaction and just reached into her pockets, bringing out a box. She opened the box to reveal a dagger that seemed unusual even to the untrained eye. Cole was surprised. This is, this is a diatanium dagger. Only three of them were ever made throughout history, and this is the only surviving one. The diatanium dagger is incredibly sharp, and I believe it might prove extremely effective against Caspian, answered Celestia. Cole stared at the diatanium dagger in her hands as if he were possessed. He had heard of the legend surrounding this dagger. It was an extremely sharp blade that was used for executions. Countless men had suffered their demise under this very same blade. Cole realized that his chances of assassinating Caspian would rise significantly as long as he could manage to get close to Caspian with this weapon. He turned his fiery gaze toward Celestia and asked, Why do you have a diatanium dagger? He couldn't comprehend how such a historical weapon was possessed by a woman like Celestia. Ancestors of my family happened upon this dagger by chance, and it was passed down along the family for generations. My dad gave me the dagger to protect myself. I never expected. Celestia burst into tears halfway through her words. She wouldn't be giving such a treasure to Cole if not for avenging her father. The Diatanium dagger was a historical artifact that could be auctioned off for billions of dollars. Its worth was defined by its existence as the last surviving sample among the three diatanium daggers known to have existed. Cole's hands trembled as he accepted the diatanium dagger. He could feel a mysterious surge of power the moment he received the dagger in his hands. 
He made a slicing motion toward the air, and a gust of wind stirred up. He could even hear a sound that resembled a dragon's roar. The gust of wind traveled in a straight line and directly cut down a small tree in the distance. Cole laughed out loud as he turned back to Celestia. Ha ha ha. With a weapon like this, I can definitely kill Caspian now. He hated Caspian just as much as Celestia for eradicating Galacrest and leaving him alive as a bereaved dog. Celestia felt much better after hearing his words. She felt that Cole deserved to die as well for his inaction when her father died. She planned to let Cole and Caspian battle each other to their deaths instead of dirtying her own hands. The pale moonlight ominously shone upon her evil smile. The next day, the governor of New Bay issued a reform for the entirety of the city. The reform specifically targeted the casinos operating within New Bay. Countless men in uniforms soon stormed into the casinos while they were still in operation. The gamblers within the casinos were all kicked out. Managers and employees of the casinos were all detained for investigation. The Hoff family was the key target of the new wave of reforms. They had hundreds of casinos operating under their ownership within New Bay, and their cash flow amounted to billions daily. Every single business operating under the Hoff family's ownership was forcefully shut down. The purge had evidently caused huge losses for the Hoff family. The bigwigs within New Bay all began to panic. Some had even surrendered themselves to the authorities and came clean with all the crimes they had committed. The Hoff family instantly lost their splendor, and the atmosphere within the family's residence was freezing cold. The helpers working directly for the Hoff family felt that they were constantly walking on thin ice. Some of the helpers who had accidentally angered Charles were even buried alive. Chapter 322 Declaration of War Charles sat on the sofa with a sunken yet serious expression. Jean seemingly came home in a hurry. Dad, I just tried to visit the governor, but Deputy Gibson was standing guard at the front and barred everyone from visiting. He felt slighted as he was used to being welcomed by Gibson with a big smile whenever he visited the governor. But now, Gibson had given him a complete shift of attitude. The deputy no longer had to treat him with any respect. Jean was filled with immense anger but he had nowhere to vent his frustrations. New Bay as a whole had been shifting ever since Caspian appeared within the city. The Hoff family gradually lost all their power and authority. Jean couldn't have everyone bend over to his every whim any longer. He had never seen his family in such disarray in his life. You can't stay here anymore. You need to leave as soon as possible, replied Charles. Jean began to panic. But why, Dad? I can't just leave at a time like this. Our family fortune hasn't made it out yet. I can't go yet. New Bay isn't safe anymore. I'm sure all of this is happening because Caspian wants to get rid of our family, and transferring all of our money is out of the question. You need to leave now, or else it'll be too late, answered Charles. Charles could only wonder if Caspian was more powerful than he could ever imagine. It was game over for the Hoffs. Jean began to tear up. But Dad, Caspian and our family don't even know each other, why is he so hellbent on getting rid of us? He couldn't comprehend how a mere good, for nothing son, law of the Stuart family could be so powerful. The Hoffs had never had any interactions with South Lake City, for the decades they had been building their empire within New Bay. Nobody could understand why Caspian came all the way here to make enemies out of the Hoffs. Jean felt both angry and terrified as tears flowed down his cheeks. He was afraid that his upcoming days would be spent on the run overseas without ever having the chance to settle down. What are you crying for? Men shouldn't ever shed tears, said Charles. He then let out a sigh and continued, Caspian is more powerful than I thought. He isn't specifically targeting us. He's just eradicating every immoral faction within New Bay as a whole. Charles had already started thinking of the worst case scenario. Even though the order to cleanse New Bay of its casinos was issued by Alton, he could tell that Caspian was the one who commanded the entire operation. The casinos within New Bay were all backed by various prestigious and famous families, such as the York family of Dord City and the Hoff family. The purge would mean the families would no longer have any power over the gambling industry within the city. Alton himself would soon be in complete control of all the casinos scattered across New Bay. Caspian's plan was terrifying with acute execution by the governor of New Bay. Charles couldn't help but wonder why Alton would follow Caspian's orders as the governor of New Bay. Unless Caspian was even more powerful than Alton. Charles began to panic as he thought about how casual and calm Caspian had always presented himself. 
Charles shouted for his butler, Joseph. Joseph ran over and asked, how may I be of help, Mr. Hoff Sr.? Help Jean to pack up and bring him out of here, ordered Charles. Joseph lowered his head while his body was trembling. It was the first time in the decade he had been working for the Hoffs that he saw Charles looking so troubled. It would seem that the rumors surrounding New Bay were true. The Hoff family was facing their imminent doom. Jean looked back at his father for one last time. Take care of yourself, Dad. He gritted his teeth as he wiped away his tears. He left the house with a few of the Hoff's men. Charles felt depressed as he watched Jean leave the house. He realized that this might just be the last goodbye he could say to his own son. They might never see each other again. He had never felt so helpless throughout his entire life. However, he quickly composed himself and shoved a letter into Joseph's hands. Bring this over to Caspian. Joseph took a look at the letter and froze up on the spot. The letter was basically a declaration of war. Charles roared with a determined gaze. Caspian, you bastard. I won't go down without a fight since you're so hell bent on eradicating my family. His entire body was radiating immense murderous intent. Meanwhile, back in the luxury suite of New Bay Grand Hotel, Alton was politely reporting to Caspian. Lord Caspian, I've finished my assigned task as per your orders. Alton was extremely excited and thankful for Caspian's operation. He had always been an outsider to the matters of New Bay, even though he was known as the governor of New Bay. Everyone in the city knew that even Charles had more power and authority compared to him. Caspian's arrival had ensured that even the god of gambling would be dealt with. Alton would soon enjoy the rest of his life without any opponents within New Bay. Well done. I can guarantee that you may keep your comfortable job as governor as long as you remain an honest man, answered Caspian. Alton's face trembled with excitement. He had almost lost control of his own emotions in front of Caspian. Caspian had just reassured him that his future would be smooth sailing. After all, Alton composed himself and politely thanked Caspian. Thank you, Lord Caspian. It's an honor to be able to serve someone like you. Caspian nodded and didn't say anything further. Suddenly, Sylvia walked into the room. Caspian, I've received news that Charles's son, Jean, is attempting to escape out of New Bay, reported Sylvia. Caspian smiled and looked back at Alton. You know what to do, Alton. Make sure that the young man doesn't make it out of the city. Yes, sir. I'll deal with it right away. Alton nodded his head and left the room. He urgently picked up his pace to finish the task assigned by Caspian. After Alton had left, Sylvia spoke up once more. One more thing, Caspian. The Hoff family's butler wishes to speak with you. Caspian was amused. Oh, the Hoff family's butler wishes to see me? At a time like this? Very well. Two minutes later, Joseph sheepishly entered the luxury suite. He had first seen Caspian back during the Hoff family's banquet. He could tell that Caspian was a powerful and smart man. He wasn't someone he could afford to offend. Mr. Lynch, I'm here to pass along this letter for Mr. Hoff Sr. I just want to say that all of this has nothing to do with me. Joseph's legs had given out right as he finished his words. He knelt down before Caspian while beginning to cry out of fear. He was worried that receiving a declaration of war might anger Caspian and his life would be forfeited. He didn't want to risk his own life for the Hoff family's matter. Chapter 323 toward Hoff residence alone. Caspian frowned as he looked at Joseph. He wondered if he was as terrifying as a demon. He waved his hand at Sylvia for her to bring him the letter. He opened the letter, read through the declaration of war, and began to smile. Very interesting, said Caspian. He then threw the letter onto a nearby table and looked back at Joseph. Go back to the Hoffs and tell Charles that I'll be there. Yes, sir. Joseph felt relieved as he stood back up and left the luxury suite. He only realized that his back was completely drenched in sweat when he made it out of the room. What's written on the letter, Caspian? Asked Sylvia. Caspian shook his head and laughed. Charles asked if I had the guts to make a trip to Hoff residence alone and that he could understand if I was too afraid to do so. What an interesting letter. Sylvia was furious. What? How dare he try and provoke you like this? I'll gather up some men and head over to Hoff residence right away. She saw the challenge as nothing but disrespect for Caspian. She couldn't comprehend how a random nobody like Charles would dare to write a letter to demand a challenge against the Deodoranian god of war himself. Calm down shouted Caspian when he noticed how frantic Sylvia had become. Sylvia turned around with a confused look. Lord Caspian, 
Caspian smiled and replied, Since Charles challenged me alone, it'll make it seem like I'm chickening out if I don't show up myself. I can't let you go alone, Caspian. I can't guarantee your safety if anything happens while you're there by yourself, answered Sylvia. Caspian stood up with his eyes gleaming with joy. It's fine. I've already decided that I'm going. I'm not scared of the Hoffs. Sylvia stood in awe at his words. She could only wonder how the Hoff family could muster the courage to challenge Caspian in the first place. Caspian never even frowned when he faced off against millions of enemy troops during his career in the South Aridlands. He could even infiltrate the enemy's rear by his lonesome and take the head of the enemy general as if he were simply retrieving a bag he had dropped. Meanwhile, the atmosphere within Hoff residence was at its worst. All the helpers working for the Hoffs had already been dismissed. The only people left in the house were bodyguards and fighters serving the Hoff family. They were all men who were personally employed and trained by the Hoff family. They had worked for the family in New Bay for years. In the living room, Joseph had just returned to report to Charles. Mr. Hoff Sr., I've delivered the letter to Caspian. He has accepted your challenge. Charles put on an evil smile. Very well. I've not misjudged you. After all, Caspian. He already knew that Caspian would accept his challenge the moment he finished writing his letter. He didn't know why, but he felt that Caspian wasn't the type of person who would chicken out of a challenge. His instincts proved correct as Caspian had, in fact, accepted the challenge. Caspian accepted the challenge from Charles even though he knew that he was walking straight into a trap. Charles had never met such a foolishly brave man throughout his decades in New Bay. Is everything ready? asked Charles. All preparations have been made as per your orders. Every elite fighter of the Hops has been gathered, along with some thugs from the casinos. The total number of men at your service is 2,830. A thousand of them are tier 2 experts, a few hundred of them are tier 3 experts, and 30 of them are fighters just one step from becoming an eternal grandmaster, reported Joseph. And Joseph turned to look at the 10 fighters clad in black standing behind Charles. He was too afraid of them to continue speaking. The men standing behind Charles were specifically chosen members who were trained and cultivated with billions of dollars. The 10 of them were eternal grandmasters. They were a major reason why the Hoff family could manage to take control of 80% of the resources within New Bay. It was difficult even for the prestigious families within Dord City to have just a few eternal grandmasters working for them. The ten Eternal Grandmasters were also trained to dedicate and sacrifice their lives if needed, all for the sake of the Hoff family. Every single one of them had killed almost a hundred opponents. Caspian would not be returning home alive against such a formidable lineup. Charles nodded his head with satisfaction. You may go. Joseph immediately ran out of the living room. He felt immense pressure and couldn't breathe properly just by being near the ten Eternal Grandmasters. I'll see how you can possibly deal with this. Caspian, I'll let you see what happens when you try to go against me. Meanwhile, the night sky filled with dark clouds was lit up by thunder strikes. The entirety of New Bay would soon be shrouded under the gloomy clouds. Heavy rain soon poured down on the earth. The streets of New Bay tonight were completely silent except for the splattering of rain. Meanwhile, on the long narrow street outside of Hoff residence, there was a man donning a black trench coat. He held a black umbrella as he advanced with steady steps. His every step toward Hoff residence made a huge splash of water on the ground. Thousands of fighters stationed outside Hoff residence became nervous as they noticed his arrival. Every single one of the men readied their own firearm as they stared at the man walking down the street. Caspian slowly raised his head to reveal his calm and collected demeanor. Only the splattering rain and Caspian's footsteps could be heard on the narrow street. Caspian's footsteps eventually picked up the pace. The Hoff family's forces started panicking as they looked at Caspian with a pale expression. Some of the more timid men had already fallen to the ground after witnessing Caspian's presence alone. They were all shocked beyond relief as they wondered who was the person standing before them. Every single step coming from Caspian felt like he was stomping on their hearts. The immense pressure emanating from Caspian alone had already crushed the men's confidence. Soon after, the sounds of men coughing out blood could be heard even across the heavy rain. The men all fell onto the ground as they continued to spit out more blood. Their hearts started beating rapidly as they couldn't handle the pressure coming off of Caspian. They were all seasoned fighters, yet hundreds of them had already lost the ability to fight before the fight even began. Even the tier 2 fighters frowned as they stared at Caspian. 
the man standing before them was simply too terrifying. Chapter 324 New Bay in Trouble The Tier 2 experts were completely overwhelmed. They began to feel dizzy the moment they came into contact with Caspian. The only thing they could do under such immense pressure was to regulate their breathing and stabilize themselves. Caspian's strength was beyond what everyone had expected. His presence alone had already defeated hundreds of men before he even lifted a finger. Caspian smiled as he watched the scene unfold before him. He found it funny that mere ants were trying to block his way. Don't be scared. Let's go. A voice rang out among the thousands, prompting the men to advance toward their target. Caspian roared aloud in response, mimicking that of a tiger. Suddenly, thunder began to strike down from the skies. Caspian's roar, followed by the thunder, was deafening. Plenty of tier one fighters were frightened beyond reason. They froze up in place and gradually coughed out blood on the spot. Hundreds of tier one fighters soon collectively fell onto the ground one after another. Caspian's strength startled them so much that they had already lost the ability to fight before they even began. Caspian's footsteps rang out once more. He decided to ignore the rest of the fodder and headed straight toward Hoff residence. During these three minutes, Caspian had never once lifted a finger. He defeated thousands of trained fighters with just his immense pressure and deafening roar. The men fell to the ground in fear and could only watch as Caspian slowly entered Hoff residence. They felt terrified and helpless. They couldn't muster any strength or courage to block his way. The rest of the fighters who were still standing had frozen up in place. They were scared out of their wits and didn't even try to hinder Caspian further. You can't even take more than a single hit? Asked Caspian. He had only used a tenth of his power to defeat the tier 3 fighters. They were simply garbage compared to him. Caspian tightened his fists as the rain poured down his face. He rushed into the thick of the fray once more. The dozens of blows that landed on the men were followed by screaming and the sound of blood splattering onto the ground. Every single punch coming from Caspian would render a dozen of the tier. Three fighters defeated on the ground. His immense strength had sent chills colder than the rain down their spine. Many of the tier three experts soon lost their ambition to continue fighting. Caspian smiled. I'll let you see for yourself just how big the gap is between you and me. He started running for momentum before making a huge leap into the air. He then tightened his right fist and made an attack toward the crowd below. His punch stirred up a gust of wind, even parting the heavy rain. The sound of the wind echoed in the ears of the tier three fighters. Just a bunch of trash that think they're stronger than everyone else, said Caspian as he blasted himself back into the crowd below. His attack defeated dozens more opponents in an instant. Another gust of wind was stirred up by the attack, spreading out across all directions. The men were all shocked beyond belief. The wind coming from Caspian swiftly swept them off their feet and blew them away. Their faces distorted with pain as they coughed out blood before fainting on the ground. Chapter 32500 kills in an instant. Five minutes had passed. Hundreds of tier three experts had been defeated by Caspian. They were beaten up so badly that they were all lying on the ground wailing. Caspian looked back at all the defeated men and exclaimed, too weak. He then walked toward Hoff residence's living room. His footsteps rang out loud and clear even across the heavy rain. He had visited Hoff residence once for a banquet, but he was now here only to kill. More men rushed out to attack him as he entered the house. They were all armed with weapons and were intent on landing the killing blow. They rushed toward Caspian without any shred of hesitation as their weapons gleamed with a cold light. Come at me, shouted Caspian. He reached for his waist and pulled out his beloved dagger named Dragon's Tooth. The dagger was a weapon specifically crafted for Caspian as a gift from Balthazar after he defeated millions of enemy troops in the South Aridlands. The small blade was extraordinarily sharp and could cut through iron like butter. Caspian swept across the men with his dagger in hand. A single flash of cold steel had cut all of the men's weapons in half. The dozens of tier three experts had horrified expressions on their faces. They never expected the dagger in Caspian's hands to be so sharp. All the men's weapons were also custom made by professionals. And yet they didn't even stand a chance before Caspian's divine weapon. Is this all Charles could muster? Asked Caspian. The tier three experts were still in disbelief. Let's do it the usual way, then. The men helplessly discarded their broken weapons and raised their fists to fight back against Caspian. Caspian remained silent as he readied his stance before lashing out with his weapon in hand. 
The flash of cold steel appeared once more but on the tier 3 experts necks this time around. By the time Caspian finished his attack, the men had all frozen in place like statues. Caspian put away his dagger in a swift motion without any trace of blood lingering on the blade itself. He confidently turned around and continued making his way inside Hoff residence. The dozens of tier 3 experts soon fell down to the floor one after another. An extremely deep wound soon appeared on their necks, and blood gushed out like fountains. Meanwhile, inside Hoff residence, Joseph ran into the room in a state of panic once more. Bad news, Mr. Hoff Sr. You look like shit. What happened? Asked Charles, Caspian, and more. Lynch is here, answered Joseph with a pale white face. What? How is that even possible? That's not possible. Charles shook his head in disbelief after hearing Joseph's report. Fear began to creep up onto his heart. The 2,000 trained fighters he had meticulously gathered for today had been defeated by Caspian in mere minutes. It was as if Caspian were a god or something. Charles found Joseph's report unbelievable. Mr. Hoff, Caspian isn't human. He defeated hundreds of tier 3 fighters with just a single blow, and the dagger in his hand can slice through iron like its butter. With it, he killed dozens of tier 3 experts, replied Joseph. He wouldn't have believed it if not for the fact that he had seen it unfold before his own eyes. Caspian didn't seem human to Joseph. He seemed more like a god of war. A complete monster. What? Charles froze up in place and was at a loss for words. A single blow managed to defeat hundreds of tier 3 fighters. And a simple dagger managed to kill dozens of tier 3 experts. Charles could only wonder how and why Caspian was so overwhelmingly powerful. Sounds of footsteps interrupted his thoughts. I'm sorry I took so long, Mr. Hoff Sr., said Caspian. Joseph crumbled onto the floor out of fear the moment he heard Caspian's voice. Charles looked up to find Caspian in a black trench coat walking toward him. He felt immense pressure emanating from Caspian with just a single glance. Charles felt as if he was being strangled and could no longer breathe properly while his heartbeat skyrocketed. Caspian smiled at Charles. Am I invited for dinner, Mr. Hoff Sr.? But your place doesn't seem as welcoming today. Caspian appeared calm and collected as if nothing had happened. He acted as though he was just here for a visit. He didn't have to exert any effort as he made his way into Hoff residence. Charles felt immense anger surging from his chest as he stared at Caspian. He shouted in an attempt to vent his frustrations. Caspian, I've never wronged you. So why are you so hell-bent on eradicating my family? Caspian sat down on a nearby sofa without giving him a reply. He crossed his legs and looked back up at Charles without any emotions. You're right. We hold no grudges against each other. I want to eradicate your family simply because I hate you, answered Caspian. Charles was utterly confused. What did I do to make you hate me? Caspian playfully answered, I heard that you married a young and beautiful woman even though you're already in your 70s. I'm still a young and handsome man, but I can only have one wife. That pissed me off. That's all. Charles was left dumbfounded while Caspian continued. You're ruining another person's life, you know that? Your wife is just a young and innocent 20-year-old woman who still has her life ahead of her. The difference in age is so absurd that you could be her grandfather. Don't you feel any shame at all? Well, nobody else will step up to deal with a creep like you if I don't do it myself. Charles froze in place as he never expected Caspian to hate him for such an absurd reason. He was expecting to be reprimanded for his casino operations in New Bay. He knew that the Hoff family would be in grave danger if all the crimes he had committed were brought to light. Caspian, however, was simply pissed that he had married more than one wife. Charles couldn't understand how his marriage mattered in the grand scheme of things. He had always assumed that one could indulge oneself with the attention of the opposite sex so long as one had the money to afford them. Caspian could simply buy a house and keep several women he fancied by his side. Charles could only wonder if he was genuinely being targeted simply because Caspian was pissed off by the fact that he had married. Another. It didn't make any sense at all. Perhaps Caspian was just making things up to toy with and humiliate him. Charles had never heard of such an insane explanation. He coughed out a large amount of blood from the absurdity of the situation. He then stared at Caspian with his eyes wide open. What a load of bullshit, Caspian. Chapter 326 10 Eternal Grandmasters. Caspian laughed out loud as he watched Charles coughing out blood from disbelief. Relax, old man. I was just kidding. 
Charles held up his chest as his face turned pale white. You! He almost went unconscious from suffocation. Caspian was vile even with his words. Charles took a few breaths to calm down. Don't be cocky, you brat. There will always be someone better than you in life. I'll show you the Ha family's true power. Caspian smiled. The Ha family's true power? Aren't they all just trash? Caspian had an air of arrogance around him, viewing the fighters he encountered on his way to Charles as mere trash. The great numbers of the fighters were nothing as Caspian had only used 30% of his power to deal with all of them. Ha ha ha. Do you really think that's all I have got, young man? Do you really think that was all I, who had crafted his own destiny within New Bay, had to offer? Ten men subsequently appeared beside Charles. Each of them had a powerful presence, while their eyes displayed intense murderous intent. All ten of them were eternal grandmasters. Each of them was at least ten times stronger than the tier. Three experts. Caspian was surprised by the sight. He wasn't afraid, but was merely surprised that the Hoff family managed to get ten eternal grandmasters under their command. Three eternal grandmasters were already enough to keep prestigious families in Dord City out of harm. The Ha family's arsenal might truly outweigh even the strongest families in Dord City. Caspian could tell that Charles had spent a lot of resources on the ten eternal grandmasters. So, are they your ace in the hole? Asked Caspian with a smile. That's right. I've spent billions training them from the ground up. They are the very reason why I am where I am now, answered Charles. Charles had made plenty of enemies for the decades he had been around New Bay. All of his enemies were promptly defeated by his men. Even the families from Dord City that tried to take over New Bay from Charles were sent home in defeat. Over time, everyone around the city knew that the god of gambling had a powerful ace in the hole that no one could contest against. The ten eternal grandmasters served as the ultimate assurance of Charles' peaceful future within New Bay. But now, he had no other choice but to reveal his hand in order to deal with Caspian. Charles knew he might lose if he still tried to play it safe. He believed that even Caspian would surrender when faced with ten eternal grandmasters at once. Caspian smiled as he looked at the smug Charles. So you think that having ten eternal grandmasters makes you invincible? That's quite hilarious, actually. I never expected the god of gambling to be so naive. He remained confident as usual as if ten eternal grandmasters were nothing before him. An ordinary person coming face to face with ten eternal grandmasters would have been scared out of their wits. But Caspian had faced off against plenty of even more powerful foes back at South Eridlands as the Diatoranian god of war. The ten eternal grandmasters truly amounted to nothing before Caspian. Once upon a time, in South Eridlands, the enemy had sent ten supreme grandmasters to surround Caspian. Each and every one of the supreme grandmasters represented the peak of strength and techniques. They were all individually stronger than these mere eternal grandmasters by at least a hundredfold. But in the end, all ten supreme grandmasters met their demise in the hands of Caspian. Hundreds of thousands of enemy troops were defeated and killed. Even the chief of the enemy had to personally make amends with Caspian himself. Charles coldly exclaimed, So arrogant! I will be burying you here today! Brat! Kill him! The ten eternal grandmasters circled around Caspian in an instant. Their movements were faster and stronger than the tier 3 experts from earlier. The very next moment, all ten of them attacked at the same time. They were furious after being provoked by Caspian's comments. They wondered how a young, random nobody like Caspian had the guts to disrespect them. They all agreed to teach him a lesson and instill fear into the young man. Charles had a smug expression as he saw that Caspian had absolutely no chance of surviving. Not even an innate grandmaster would be able to escape unscathed after facing off against ten eternal grandmasters at once. Meanwhile, Caspian's expression remained calm and bored as the ten eternal grandmasters rushed toward him. The ten of them were simply just slightly stronger trash before him. A crisp sound rang out through the room as he unsheathed Dragon's Tooth once more. Suddenly, Caspian disappeared and left behind a mirage of himself. Flashes of cold steel connecting to its victims could be seen across the room for a few seconds. Before Caspian sat down on the sofa once more, his legs remained crossed as if nothing had happened. The ten eternal grandmasters stood frozen in place as their expressions began to distort. A wound appeared on the neck of every single one of them, and with it, blood gushed out of their throat like an open dam. All ten of the eternal grandmasters fell onto the floor. 
They never even had the chance to blink before they were killed. All that was left in their open eyes was unprecedented fear. They had never expected to be killed in an instant. What? How is this possible? What happened? The most surprised person in the room was none other than Charles. He couldn't comprehend how ten of his strongest men, whom he had spent billions on, were killed in an instant. Charles began to tremble as he muttered, This isn't real. Impossible. He couldn't accept the fact that his trump card had amounted to nothing. Just what did Caspian do in those short few seconds? How did he manage to kill ten eternal grandmasters, as if he were just stepping on an ant? Just what was Caspian's true identity? Charles was filled with questions and immense hatred as he stared daggers into Caspian. Caspian started resembling a demon from hell in Charles' eyes. What's next, Charles? If you have nothing left to show, then you're next, said Caspian. Charles was frightened to the core as Caspian stared back at him. He had nothing left to defend himself with. All of his efforts in planning to kill Caspian had amounted to nothing. He gritted his teeth to compose himself. Do you think I'll surrender? Charles' expression turned hideous as he pulled out a handgun from his waist. Ha ha ha. You may be powerful, Caspian, but you're nothing compared to the gun. Chapter 327 True Power Charles had acquired the gun through the black market. He had always kept it on his person and never once used it. Today was the very first time he had drawn his weapon. Caspian smiled with contempt as he watched Charles pull out the handgun. He commended Charles for his futile effort. A gun might have been able to threaten a simple fighter, but it was a mere toy before Caspian. His sharp eyes and reactions could easily dodge any bullets coming at him. Very funny, Charles. I thought you had something better up your sleeves, said Caspian. Caspian shook his head in disbelief as Charles was more foolish than he had expected. To think that he would be threatened by a mere handgun. Charles gritted his teeth furiously. Caspian, let's see if you can dodge my bullets. He proceeded to open fire without any hesitation. Three loud bangs echoed as bullets shot out of the gun. A smirk soon appeared on Charles' face. He thought that Caspian could not dodge his bullets. He had already presumed that Caspian would be nothing but a corpse the moment he pulled out his handgun. Caspian remained steady, even when faced off against the incoming bullets. He managed to evade all three bullets in the nick of time. On the wall behind him were three holes left by the bullets. Charles looked back at Caspian to find him standing straight without any injuries on his body. How is this possible? He was shocked as he wondered what could have happened. It should have been easy to kill Caspian with how fast a bullet flew. Caspian stood close to the gun. So just how did he manage to dodge in time? Charles began to tremble out of fear, as he wondered if Caspian was truly human. Caspian seemed more like a demon in his eyes. Charles began to regret his decision to challenge Caspian. He realized he should have fled New Bay, but it was too late for him to make any more choices. Are you done yet, Charles? asked Caspian. Caspian found it amusing that Charles would try and provoke him further at this point in time. I'm done for. Charles gritted his teeth in anger and disbelief. He couldn't handle being humiliated by Caspian after he had ruled New Bay as the god of gambling for decades. But he had nothing left to stand his ground. Caspian smiled in response. Then it's time to die, Charles. He stood up and rushed toward his target. He raised his hand to Charles' neck and tried to strangle him. At this point, Caspian saw Charles as nothing more than a feeble old man. Charles froze up from fear as Caspian closed in with imminent doom. He needed to retaliate in order to ensure his own survival. I won't be going down without a fight, Caspian, shouted Charles as he emanated immense pressure from his body. His physique began to change as his eyes glowed with vigor once more. The wrinkles on his face disappeared, and he no longer seemed like the same feeble old man he was just a second ago. It seemed like he had returned back to his youth. Caspian was impressed. An innate grandmaster? It seemed that Charles had hidden his true power all along. He was an innate grandmaster who was one step above the eternal grandmasters that served him. A man of his caliber could have provided great service to South Aridlands. It was especially rare to find innate grandmasters within Diatoran. Caspian was surprised that Charles was, in fact, a professionally trained fighter. Charles had to expose his true strength only because his life was on the line. I will definitely kill you today, Caspian, roared Charles. He roared to vent his frustrations. He knew that he wouldn't really stand a chance against Caspian, even though he himself was an innate grandmaster. Caspian's display of strength just moments ago was too terrifying, after all. 
Charles knew that he wouldn't be able to secure a victory even if he fought with everything he had. But now, he had no other choice other than to fight and survive. This was the one true trump card that he had kept hidden for decades. Caspian teased. What a cunning old man! You actually managed to hide your power for such a long time. I'm impressed! He was surprised that Charles had planned this all out and set himself up as the biggest surprise of all. However, all of Charles' plans were futile. Charles laughed out loud in an attempt to cheer himself. We've never offended each other, Caspian. And yet, you seek to destroy my family for no reason. You've brought this on to yourself. He wouldn't have exposed his true power if Caspian had not pushed him toward the edge. Charles had only wanted to control New Bay in its entirety. He had no choice but to utilize his full strength, now that Caspian was here to thwart his plans. He realized that revealing his true power would also expose his ambition to Alton. Alton had a duty to overlook the safety of New Bay as its governor, and wouldn't allow Charles to rule New Bay from the shadows. Charles had no choice but to do so in order to survive, but it would also mean gaining a new enemy in the process. Even if he managed to defeat Caspian, Alton would hound him for the rest of his days. Charles was so furious that he wanted to split Caspian into pieces. Caspian calmly smiled with contempt in response. Charles felt uneasy at being mocked. What's so funny? Caspian, your death is near. He wondered if Caspian was crazy to remain so calm after he had revealed his true strength as an innate grandmaster. An innate grandmaster was so powerful that one man alone could have controlled an entire region for himself. Only a handful of innate grandmasters existed within Diatoran, and an even smaller number of them resided within Dord City, working for the powerful families. Charles could have conquered the entirety of New Bay with his own strength alone without anyone proving a threat to him. He was surprised to find that Caspian wasn't worried for his life after witnessing his true strength. I just think you've lived a sad life, old man. Remember what you said? There's always someone better than you. You should listen to yourself sometime, answered Caspian. Charles had grown complacent about facing a stronger opponent ever since he controlled the majority of New Bay. Little did he know that being an innate Grandmaster meant nothing against the man known as Caspian. At this point, Charles had lost his mind. Die! Caspian! He wanted to kill the man who mocked and humiliated him again and again. Take this! shouted Charles as he went in for an all-out attack. A gust of wind stirred up as he tightened his fists. He mustered up enough power within a single blow that could part mountains. Charles had complete certainty that his attack would be able to kill Caspian in one hit. Chapter 328 New Bay in Trouble Caspian pitied the old man as he tightened his own fists to fight Charles's incoming attack. Let me show you what true strength looks like, Charles, declared Caspian as he dished out his own attack. His own clenched fist stirred up a gust of wind of its own, seemingly sucking out all the air in the nearby space. Charles' punch seemed relatively weak compared to Caspian's. Caspian's fists were visibly more vicious and imposing. His fists would genuinely be able to part mountains. Charles started panicking as he noticed the power coming from his opponent. Caspian's strength surprised him once more, but he had no other choice left at this point. Enough chatter, Caspian! Show me your true strength, roared Charles. He slammed his fist toward Caspian's. A thunderous sound rang out from the impact as the fists collided and sent out a wave of wind that dispersed around them. Porcelain vases and glass cups shattered from the blast of wind, and the surroundings looked like they had been hit by a typhoon. Charles looked up at Caspian with shock the moment their fists collided with one another. A clear, crisp sound of bones cracking could be heard. The next moment, Charles was sent flying backward like a cannonball. He slammed onto the wall with a loud thud, forming a huge crater on the wall. The wall soon collapsed from the impact and Charles was crushed underneath the rubble. Caspian stood still with a calm expression as had already expected such an outcome. He found Charles's attempt at killing him hilarious. Even though Charles was an innate grandmaster, he had very little fighting experience. Charles' unstable and inexperienced stance revealed his weakness, resulting in his loss. The luxurious home had already turned into nothing but ruins and rubble. Caspian walked across the destroyed house and stood before the collapsed wall. Charles spent his remaining strength to claw his way out of the rubble. His body seemed gravely injured while blood flowed out his mouth. He no longer seemed as vigorous as he was just a moment ago, returning to being a feeble old. Charles stared at Caspian with terror. 
he realized that Caspian's strength was way beyond what he had expected. Even an innate grandmaster like him, who could have easily been the strongest person alive within New Bay, could not withstand his attacks. He was defeated with just a single blow. Charles finally realized that he was the frog in a well. His warnings to Caspian had returned to prick his own heart. There really was someone stronger than he was, and it appeared in the form of Caspian. For Charles, Caspian truly seemed like a demon from hell. He began to panic as Caspian slowly walked up to him. Leave me alone, Caspian, don't get any closer, shouted Charles. He felt unprecedented fear looking at the man who had defeated him. Charles had revealed all of his trump cards and truly had nothing left to offer. And he still couldn't match Caspian's strength. Charles had lost all hope at this point. He couldn't think of any way to possibly defeat Caspian. An evil smile crept up on Caspian's face as he stared at Charles on the floor. Charles trembled with fear as Caspian's smile was so vile and evil that it made him look like the devil incarnate. You still have a chance to live, Charles. But it depends on what you do next, said Caspian. Charles was in disbelief as he looked up at Caspian. You'll let me go? He wondered why Caspian would just let him off the hook when he could deal the final blow anytime now. You have a choice. You may hand over all of the Ha family's properties and funds, and I'll guarantee that you'll be safe, answered Caspian. Caspian didn't want the Ha family's abundant fortune to be sent abroad as it would be a major loss to Diatoran. Part of the Ha family's fortune might have been transferred overseas if he had simply killed Charles on the spot. He decided to keep Charles alive and have him willingly surrender his fortune back to the country. Charles furrowed his brows at the offer. He could tell what Caspian was trying to do. He simply couldn't give away the fortune that he had painstakingly amassed for the majority of his life in New Bay. But then again, exchanging his fortune for his survival was quite the sweet deal. This might be the end for Charles if he didn't accept the deal. He had no other choice. He couldn't physically defeat Caspian in combat. There would always be hope so long as he could live to see another day. He could always just regain what he had lost. I accept your offer, Caspian, but can you really guarantee my safety? My only request is for you to let me leave Diatoran, replied Charles. Charles knew he would no longer be welcome within New Bay when everything was settled. His only option was to escape overseas and restart anew. The Ha family had retained some of their fortune in overseas accounts. It would allow him to live as lavishly as he used to. You gotta be kidding me. Do you really think I would let you go after all the crimes you've committed? You'll be alive, yes, but you'll be spending the rest of your life behind bars. I know what you're thinking, old man. Besides, when I say surrender all of your funds, that includes the funds you've stashed overseas as well, answered Caspian. Charles gritted his teeth in anger as he stared at Caspian. You're too cruel, Caspian. I'd rather die and fool your plans if I'm not allowed to leave Diatoran in peace. He couldn't possibly spend the rest of his life in prison. You make it sound like we're negotiating a deal or something. Remember, you either do as I say, or you'll die replied Caspian. Caspian was never seeking Charles' opinion on the matter. Charles laughed out loud. So what if I'm dead, Caspian? That just means you won't be getting sent him overseas. So long as my son lives, the Hoff family will live on. Charles had already helped his son escape just in case the worst case scenario happened. Even if he were to meet his end at Caspian's hands, the Hoff family would continue its lineage overseas through his only son. Caspian laughed in response. Things may not have gone as you planned, old man. Charles looked back up at Caspian with confusion. Seeing how confident Caspian looked, he felt uneasy. Suddenly, a group of armed soldiers rushed into the house. The man leading the group was none other than the governor of New Bay, Alton, himself. Alton walked toward Caspian and knelt down with respect. Mr. Lynch! Charles was left utterly confused by the sight. He could only wonder why the governor was treating Caspian with utmost respect. Just who was Caspian, and what was his true identity? Just how powerful Caspian was to have Alton kneeling down before him. Chapter 329, The End for the Hoff Family. Stand up, Alton. Have you captured your target? Asked Caspian. Charles was left dumbfounded as he watched from the side. Yes, sir, answered Alton. Alton then stood up and waved back at one of his men. Bring the target over. Two of the soldiers left the room and returned with a handcuffed young man in tow. Gee! Charles was shocked when he recognized the young man being brought into the room. It was none other than his own son, 
Gene. Dad, you gotta help me. Gene felt relieved once he saw his father, as if he had finally seen a glimmer of hope. Charles was on the verge of tears as he asked his son what happened. You should have been out of Diatorin by now, Gene. Why did you get caught? He had already made plans for his son to escape New Bay. He had also assigned dozens of bodyguards to follow Gene. These bodyguards should have accompanied him out of Diatorin, as per his order. But now, Charles could only wonder what had gone wrong. Dad, Deputy Gibson had arrested me before I even left New Bay, complained Gene while tears flowed down his cheeks. He was arrested in broad daylight, even though he was the heir to the most powerful family within New Bay. He had wanted to retaliate but ultimately surrendered himself to the authorities under the pressure of having dozens of handguns pointed at him. Gene was both surprised and saddened to find his father in such a grievous state. He had already noticed that Hoff residence was in disarray as he was being escorted into the house. The streets outside the house were painted completely red after the Hoff's men were all defeated in combat. The men had all collapsed onto the ground and were wailing continuously. Alton ordered his men to arrest all of the Hoff family's men. He saw them as nothing more than troublemakers in New Bay. Dealing with them was part of cleaning up New Bay for a peaceful future. The most shocking news to Alton was the fact that the Hoff family had ten eternal grandmasters working for them. Charles had kept the existence of the ten eternal grandmasters under wraps, so as not to reveal his trump card. Alton felt that it was a pity that all ten of them had already died. Their blood painted the entire floor red. The death of ten eternal grandmasters all at once was huge news. They were all established fighters who were powerful and respected, but they had never stood a chance against Caspian. Jean scanned his father from head to toe and realized that he was seriously injured, his shirt tattered and his entire body covered in blood. He was the only other person in the world that had known of Charles' true strength. Jean also knew that no ordinary man could have possibly defeated his father in combat. And yet, he could only wonder how thoroughly defeated his father had been to be lying on the floor. Jean slowly looked up to find Caspian standing still with his arms folded. Caspian was emanating a powerful presence that forced everyone around him into submission. Jean wondered if Caspian had managed to destroy the Hoff family alone. Charles froze for a moment before his eyes widened from realization. He pointed up at Caspian angrily. You're quite the schemer. Caspian, have you planned all of this since the start? It dawned on him that Caspian had already long thought of ways to deal with the Hoff family. Charles realized that his own arrogance had blinded him into thinking he could take on Caspian. He had even gone so far as to plan layers of traps to deal with Caspian, only to end up being defeated while Caspian remained unharmed. The Hoff family suffered heavy losses, and Charles himself was gravely injured. The empire known as the Hoffs was on the verge of collapse. Charles had never in a million years expected something like this to happen. He had never expected someone so powerful like Caspian to suddenly appear in New Bay. He reminisced about all the years he spent toiling in New Bay and building his business from the ground up to where it was. Now, a very wise choice, Charles, but it's too late. I gave you a chance, and you didn't take it, replied Caspian. Caspian had already made ample preparations when he decided to face the entire Hoff family alone. He had full confidence that he would come out victorious. Charles's expression sank as he gritted his teeth in anger. Let my son go, Caspian. I swear that I will surrender all my funds, everything. He had absolutely no other choices left. He had to do anything in order to keep the Hoff family alive. He was left with one choice in order to keep Gene alive. If Gene were to be arrested as well, then it would truly spell the end for the Hoffs. It's too late, old man. You don't have the right to negotiate with me any further. The both of you will be put on trial, answered Caspian. Both Charles and Gene would have to be punished appropriately. Caspian wouldn't let any of them run away from being held responsible for their crimes. A loud thud rang out as Charles knelt down on the floor. Tears flowed down his cheeks as he begged Caspian. Mr. Lynch, please. I've never begged anyone for anything in my entire life. So please, please spare this old man's one and only son. I'll do anything. I'll atone for all my sins. Charles was sobbing uncontrollably and no longer resembled the legendary god of gambling. He realized that an elder like himself was already nearing his end, but his son was still in his early twenties. It would be a pity if John would be locked up for the rest of his life before he even managed to have his own family. What are you doing? Dad, why are you kneeling? Shouted Jean. 
Jean couldn't comprehend how the venerable god of gambling would kneel before Caspian. Caspian was slightly touched by Charles' actions. Everyone had something they cherished, and Charles was a father who cherished his son more. However, Caspian quickly regained his composure. There's no point in begging me about it. Your son will be safe so long as he has never committed any crimes worthy of meeting the death penalty. Everything will be dealt with accordingly once the both of you are put on trial, answered Caspian. He wouldn't let Jean escape, no matter how much Charles had begged. Charles had a duty to protect Diatoran and its civilians as the Diatoranian god of war. He couldn't afford to let emotions cloud his judgment when it was time to bring criminals to justice. Charles' expression turned for the worst as he realized his final glimmer of hope had been extinguished. He realized that nothing would change no matter how much he begged. Caspian turned around and threw a look at Alton. Charles Hoff! We've been going against one another for almost 30 years, haven't we? Everyone in New Bay called you the god of gambling. And your power and authority within the city surpassed even my own as the governor. But now, our decades-long grudge against each other is finally over. Chapter 330 Masked Man Although Alton was the governor, he had never matched Charles' power and authority in New Bay. He lost many of his men to corruption, as Charles slowly but surely stripped all of them away. He realized he could control New Bay completely once he dealt with Charles. I would have conquered all of New Bay if I had another year. You're just some nobody who couldn't do anything without Caspian coming to your rescue. You're nothing more than a coward without any ambitions of your own, said Charles. Alton was visibly angry from his comment. What did you say? Arrest him. Several of his men steadily walked up to arrest Charles. Charles no longer had the will to fight after suffering heavy injuries from his fight with Caspian. He would soon be met with an equally harsh session of interrogation. Charles still wanted to make a last stand, but it was already a miracle that he could manage to remain conscious while bearing deep wounds. Besides, he no longer stood any chance at turning the tide with Caspian and the group of armed soldiers standing before him. Resisting would truly spell the end of his life. One of the soldiers handcuffing Charles teased, Let's go, god of gambling. It was not every day that you could arrest someone like Charles. Charles was furious after being disrespected by a mere soldier. Bastard. He felt suffocated and started panting heavily for air. He shook his head in despair, wondering if the Hoff family's god of gambling was no more. A loud bang suddenly rang out and sent the soldiers flying backward. Suddenly, a figure clad in all black appeared in the room. He wore a long black robe that covered his entire body, and a mask that helped conceal his identity. Caspian's calm and collected demeanor had turned sour for the first time tonight. He could tell from a single glance that the masked man was no ordinary person and was even stronger than Charles. Charles' expression turned from despair to joy, as if the masked man's appearance had lit up a new hope within his heart. He gritted his teeth as he knelt down politely despite his injuries. It's good to see you, Mr. Gilbert Chair. You're useless, Charles. It's a pity to see you in such a sorry state on your own turf, answered Gilbert. Charles surprisingly remained silent as he took the criticism head on. He knew very well just how powerful the masked man before him was. When Charles was young, he had joined a secret society by chance. It was also the very same secret society that helped him become the god of gambling. Let's go said Gilbert as he looked down at Charles. Gilbert had risked himself to rescue Charles only because he deemed Charles still valuable. Mr. Shane, please save my only son as well, shouted Charles. Jean had also regained a glimmer of hope as he realized that someone was here to save his father. You gotta save me, dad. He knew that his father would definitely not leave him behind. Charles grew anxious as he watched his son asking for help. But Gilbert seemed to have no intention of saving Jean as he stood still without a response. Charles gritted his teeth and declared, Mr. Shane, I'm willing to offer you all of my fortune, so long as you save my only son. An offer of several billion dollars would be able to tempt anyone. Gilbert shuddered as he listened to Charles' offer. It's a deal, Charles, but if you ever go back on your word, you should already know what will happen. Of course, Mr. Shane, I never go back on my word. The Hoff family's fortune is more than it seems on the surface. I've also hidden a lot of funds around the world. Everything can be yours so long as you save me and my son, answered Charles. Charles had long started planning for times of crisis like this. He had been transferring funds overseas since a decade ago. He had transferred his funds to a secret location that not even Jean knew. Gilbert turned around to face Alton. Let him go. 
Alton was pissed, feeling disrespected after being commanded like a maid. Who do you think you are? Kill him. I'll tear that mask off your face once you're dead and see just who the hell you are, shouted Alton. The next moment, dozens of guns were aimed at Gilbert. I gave you a choice, Mr. Governor. You should know your own limits, answered Gilbert. Gilbert's body flickered for a moment before he disappeared on the spot and reappeared right on top of Alton. The inhumane speed had caught everyone by surprise. Judging by his annoyed response, it seemed that Gilbert really wanted to kill Alton. It was extremely disrespectful, and also an extremely bold move to try and kill a governor of New Bay in plain sight. But Gilbert was set on killing Alton right then and there. Even though Alton was an eternal grandmaster himself, he was still surprised by Gilbert's strength. Gilbert attempted to strangle Alton and break his neck in one swift motion. Alton would definitely die once Gilbert managed to sink his hands into his neck. You must have balls of steel to be trying something like this right in front of me, shouted Caspian. The roar from Caspian was so loud that Gilbert's ears were ringing from the aftermath. By the time he managed to react, Caspian's fist was already right in front of his face. Caspian's fists were filled with so much anger and power that the room began to shake. Gilbert raised his arms in order to shield his head from the attack. A heavy thud echoed as Gilbert was sent flying backward before he coughed out a huge amount of blood. Gilbert retreated backward for dozens of steps before he managed to stabilize himself. The only thought going through his mind right now was to escape. From that single punch, he realized he was absolutely no match for Caspian. Lingering around would only mean being defeated and arrested alongside Charles. Gilbert steadied himself as he grabbed a hold of Charles. Charles was still frozen in place after witnessing the impact of Caspian's punch. He was surprised that even Gilbert was not a match for Caspian. He began to wonder about Caspian's true identity.